pleasant good day to all tuning into Christ Jesus' is Lord Ministry. I want to welcome you back to this another Bible study. This study is not one of just talk, but it is one of substance. There are many out there on substance. But here at Christ Jesus' is Lord's Ministry, the Bible speaks, and we are here to help you understand the Bible so that you can live a fulfilled life and walk in the destiny that Jesus Christ has desired for you to walk in from the foundation of the world. Because Jesus said, through his apostle John the Beloved in 3 John 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as thy soul prospers. So there's, there's a threefold desire that God has for each individual, each man, each woman, each boy, each girl who is birthed on this planet called Earth. And he said in Jeremiah, he know the thoughts that he has towards you. Thoughts to prosper you and to give you a future. So now, as we look at this subject under attack when witchcraft and evil altars are raised against you, I want you to be cognizant of the fact that there is witchcraft out there, and that there are evil altars that men and women will raise at you, witches and wizards, and people in their court to destroy you. And such attacks are done covertly. They are done undercover, so that you don't know they fight against you in the spirit. So before, for, without further ado, let us pray. Father, we give you thanks, we bless your name, we glorify your name. I ask the Father that you will come close to each one who is studying with Christ Jesus' law and ministry, who is viewing this broadcast at this moment. I bless their name, them, dear God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and I pray that you will surround them with your holy angels and protect them from all evil. Father, you said he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Help us all to do that, dear God, so no evil will befall us. Whether it comes from evil altars, witchcraft projection, are from witches and wizards, are the occult, whatever branch of the demon. Father, may it not come nigh our dwelling. Father, I pray that you'll cover me with the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, any sin in me, any transgression, I pray that you will forgive me and even those who are listening, dear Father, forgive them of their sins. Father, I pray for all those who are in the ear of my voice, and I pray that there will be no hindrance to this message from going forward and doing the work which thou intended it to do from the foundation of the world. It's my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, our key portion of Scripture comes to us from St. Luke chapter 16, and I'll read from verse 19 through to 22. However, the presentation will be zeroed in on verse 20 through to 22. But for us to have the full understanding of the subject, I take it from verse 19. Parable of Jesus Christ. He said, There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and feared sumptuous liberty. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the darts came and licked his sores. Verse 22, And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Jesus used this parable to convey a very important message to his hearers. Now, as I've already disclosed the subject under attack when witchcraft and evil also are raised against you. And this is going to be a part one. There is a part two coming. Now, let us define the word attack. To attack means to take strong action against. It means to try to hurt, injure, or destroy something or someone. It means to use harsh words against. 
something or someone. Now, according to the Webster's Dictionary, the word attack means to set upon or work against forcefully. It also means, secondly, to assail with unfriendly or bitter words. Thirdly, it means to begin to affect or act on injuriously. So from the definition of attack, we see that for you to be attacked, the very word, the sound of the word, suggests something in the negative. The very word has nothing good about it. To attack means that you are going against something or someone to injure it or injure them, him or her, or to hurt him or her, or at least try. It also means that you're working against a thing or a person with force and also with unfriendly or bitter words. And when it comes to witchcraft, it's only unfriendly and bitter words are used in the system of witchcraft. When they are chanting, they are not chanting friendly words for you to progress and prosper. It is words from the demonic to destroy you. And even if one should go there to book look, when the witch or the wizard is chanting, the individual who goes there does not know because he or she is not familiar with the language that the wizard is muttering and announcing from his or her mouth. Now, Dr. Luke, as I've read in St. Luke chapter 16, verse 19 through 22, records a parable that Jesus spoke to his listeners. In this parable, Jesus spoke of two men, one rich, the other poor, one healthy, the other sick, one a beggar, the other lived an extravagant lifestyle. The Bible said that he feared sumptuously every day. So he lived the life of a king every day. He was served. He lived a posh lifestyle. People waited upon him to serve him. But what is paradoxical is that the man with all the adversities was considered righteous. No, you're saying, teacher, what are you saying to me? There's no way we say that the man was righteous, as I've read St. Luke chapter 16, verse 19 through the 22. But the Bible said he died and later went to heaven. So, from our understanding, of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, all they who will go to heaven would be they who have taken on the righteousness of Christ, have forsaken sin, and have lived a life in Christ Jesus, and have must be righteous in Christ Jesus. So from the parable told by Jesus, this man is a righteous man. But a man filled with adversity, all is life. Hmm. The other who was ungodly, the rich man, because if we should read the parable in its entirety, it tells you that the man died and went to hell. The other, the rich man, who was ungodly, died and went to hell. That's what the Bible says. Now, does not this story causes you to question the righteous man relationship with God. Now, a question would come to mind, is God unrighteous? Because if the man who was not godly lived a life and feared sumptuous liberty, and the righteous man means that he trusted God, he had faith in God, he believed God and he was walking or living right with God for him to have gone to heaven when he died. According, according to, this, to the story, in the resurrection, he went to heaven. Okay. 
The question is God unrighteous. Does not God care for those who are his servants and hears according to the promise with Christ Jesus? What happened to this man Lazarus? What caused him to become sick and covered with sores to the point wherein he only wanted to be laid at the gate of the rich man who was ungodly, to be fed with the crumbs which fell from his table. The Bible says in verse 21, And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover the dogs came and licked his soul. The Bible used the word desiring, as I've just read. I'll come back to it. What caused him, that is Lazarus, the righteous man, the Christian man, like many of us, or the Christian woman, who he depicts in the story, to only have dogs as his best friends, and all else, family, and companions estranged from him, they stand aloof from him, as the psalmist would say, lovers and friends, though us put far from me. This is what Lazarus was experiencing. He had no lover, he had not a wife, he had no kids, because the story did not record that, and from his condition, even if he had a wife, the wife would have long gone, and the Bible didn't tell us of he having kids, because if he had them, then they would have need to take care of him. My Bible tells me, no good thing will God withhold from the one who walks uprightly. Moreover, the verse begins by saying, for the Lord is a sun and shield. The Lord will give favor and glory. That is Psalm 84 and verse 11. The Bible says, it begins in the verse, For the Lord is a sun and shield. The Lord will give favor and glory. What? He will give what? Favor and glory is a sun and shield. What is this thing? How and where in this narrative given by Jesus shows God being a sun and shield to Lazarus, who later died a premature death, even though he got saved? Where is the favor shown to Lazarus? If to be favored by God is only to be placed at an ungodly man's gate and beg for crumbs that fall from his table while covered in sores, sick and alone with only dogs around me. As friends, I tell you, I would not want such favor. God could and can keep that and give it to someone else. Who is in need of it? I want it. I wouldn't want it. I hope you are following me. Why was Lazarus in such a situation? You are all learned people, biblical scholars, I believe. You don't know? I'll tell you what happened to Lazarus. Lazarus was under attack. Lazarus was under attack, and as I gave you the definition at the inception of this presentation, this Bible study, that to attack means to assail something or someone with unfriendly and bitter words, or to work against forcefully, or to act on injuriously, or to take strong action against one to try to hurt, injure, or destroy. And Lazarus was experiencing all this and more. 
Lazarus was under attack from witchcraft and evil altars. Wicked people in evil altars attacked and transferred Lazarus's destiny. And evil altar is a place of evil exchange where wicked people exchange good for evil. An altar is a place where divinity meets humanity or where spirit meets humanity. And it could be either be good spirit, which is God who is a spirit, or Satan who is a spirit and is an evil spirit. That's an altar. And an exchange goes on at an altar. And at an altar, sacrifice has to take place for that exchange to go on or carried out. No, an evil altar is a place of evil exchange where wicked people exchange good for evil. It is a place where sacrifices are done to exchange people's destinies. People's lives are stolen on evil altars and given to another. Sacrifices are done on evil altars to renew the life of dying persons. It's a place where those who are supposed to die live and those who are supposed to live die. God did not create anyone to die prematurely. Psalm 90 verse 10 tells us the days of our years are three score and ten, and by reason of strength, four score, that's eighty, seventy, three score and ten, a score is twenty, plus ten, seventy, four score, four times twenty gives you eighty. So God had created us to live seventy years, based on the lifespan after sin, after the flood, and after Abraham, the lifespan cut down, and Moses, and Aaron, from 120, it comes down to 7. So we see that God expects us to live alive, live out our years. But many of us are dying prematurely because evil exchange, our evil exchanges have been carried out on our lives. Or I should say on their lives. Many do not understand what goes on in evil altars. Many do not understand that an evil altar is a dangerous place for your name to appear. And if God is not with you, as the saying goes, dog eat your supper is not a dog, but the evil spirit and the demonic is going to destroy your life, is going to destroy your future. As John 10, 10 said, the thief cometh but for the kill, steal, and destroy. And that's exactly what they do at an evil altar. They kill, steal, and destroy. From Dr. Luke's account of Jesus' parable, Lazarus died a premature death. Now let us look at the Lazarus story more in depth. Ephesians 1 verse 3 tells us, God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. In Christ, verse 4 states, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. So God did not create you to be poor. God did not create you to be sitting home doing nothing. God did not create you to go to school for all these years through kindergarten, grade school, high school, to universities, have one, two, three degrees, and come out and can't get a job. While Bozo and Mora, over there who does not, who do not rather, have degrees, qualification, never been to school, having executive position. More so, Sticky and the clown, not only operating a circus, but 
they are in high executive positions and they have more work than their hands can do. Why is that so? One of two reasons. Either they are highly blessed and favored by God, and you are cursed, or they are dealing with evil altars and witchcraft. No. How is it that you are a Christian and you are suffering so? When God says, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as you're so prospering. One, you're not prospering. Two, you're not in good health. Three, your soul is not prospering. So the threefold blessing here that God desires for you, where are they? They have been stolen, they have been placed on the evil altar by witchcraft practitioners, which is warlocks, wizards, the occultists. And you go in the air, saying, going by each day, by the grace of the Lord, by the grace of the Lord, if it's God's will, if it's God's will, patient man ride horse, you can stay there and let them attack you continuously and not to fight. The Bible in Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. The same word that is used for after is the same that would be used in. So there could be the verse could correctly be translated, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war in the flesh. Many are looking at things from a physical point of view, looking around them, seeing that they can't make two ends meet, one and one equals two. But John Brown over there says one and one is eleven. How is that so? For him one and one is eleven, but for you one and one is two. How is that so? How is it that you are broke, busted and disgusted? Where are the blessings? Wherein the Bible says no good thing will he withhold from them who walk uprightly. No, we follow in Christ and walking uprightly only brings um, sores and for you to be placed at an ungodly man's gate to beg the crumbs that fall from his table and dogs to lick your sores. If that is what it in, it, it, it is the reward for serving God, I'm saying it's not worth serving God. Either you are in ignorance as to your position in Christ, likewise your possessions that you have in Christ, or God is a liar. Because the Bible in Jeremiah Say, I know the thoughts which I think toward you, thoughts of peace, to prosper you and to give you a future. So why are you not prospering? Why are you at the bottom of the barrel all the time? Why is it that you can't even buy a loaf of bread? Why is it that you have to be begging the ungodly man every day for a meal ticket when God says in the psalm, chapel on a thousand hills are mine. The folds of the forest, I know them. And he said, if I were hungry, I would tell you. 
because the world is mine and everything in it. And in the book of Agai, he said the silver and gold is mine. In other words, all the money is mine because silver and gold here is a depiction of money. Well, he said everything is mine. And Ephesians 1 verse, it tells us that God has blessed us with our spiritual blessing in heavenly places. So before we were born, the blessings are there in the spirit lands. So what's holding up these blessings? What's stopping these blessings? Which from an evil text? Do not take things for granted. Nothing just happens like that. Things have to happen in the spirit realms first before it happens in the physical. A man dies in the spirit before the spirit world before he dies in the physical. A man is wealthy in the spirit world before he's wealthy in the physical. A man is healthy. A man is successful and progressive. A man meets in an accident in the spirit world before he meets in an accident in the physical. So don't take things for granted. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, so we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So don't think that a man is going to come to you with a machete and a gun to say he's going to chop you up and he's going to kill you. That man is able to kill and destroy you without using a machete in the physical at you. Well, he might summon the evil spirit to use someone else to chop you up or to shoot you up. But I'm telling you, the man who hates you and wants to destroy you in this day and age, he's not coming to you. Gone are the days when a man would stand in the street and they would have a boxing match or karate and the best man wins and the school will be settled. Today, they walk away, they consult their mediums, they consult their altars, they go to their witchcraft practitioner, their witches and wizards, and they go to their book of the dead and their Egyptian esoteric books. And they do their wickedness at you, just as what was happening to Lazarus. Lazarus was a righteous man. He died by saying, he went to heaven. Remember now it's a parable. Jesus is conveying a message. What caused Lazarus to not live at least one day of ease? One day of prosperity. One day of success. One day of health and happiness. One day to have a party with friends or a merriment and to have a good meal. All that Lazarus had was sickness, poverty, disease, sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fall from an ungodly man's table. That does not add up with the word of God. I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. I know the thoughts which I think towards you, thoughts to prosper you and to give you an expected end, or one version puts it, to give you a future. Now, God chose us in Christ Jesus from the foundation of the world. And the Bible says we are the righteousness of Christ. Righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Let's backtrack a little bit. Lazarus was a righteous man. We established that according to the narrative. He was a true child of God. We can establish that through the narrative. He died and went to heaven. Yet still, he suffered all the days of his life in poverty and want 
of all good things. According to Luke 16, verse 22 to 22, this righteous man, Lazarus, was covered, converted to a mere beggar. He suffered tremendously all his life. His enemies saw that he was a serious man when it comes to his relationship with God or his war with God. They tried to derail his faith, but they saw that they were not successful and they could not be successful against him because he had strong conviction in Christ Jesus. The enemies took everything away from him. And we see that his health was stripped from him, wealth and riches were stripped from him, talents and gifts stripped from him. If he had any, he didn't get a chance to use them because he became an invalid, impotent brother, covered in sores, couldn't even work to provide his basic needs. His enemies took everything away from him. Yet still he held his faith. Wicked witches and wizards in the evil altars fought against Lazarus with sickness and disease. Today some of you are going through disease. Doctors can't find what's wrong with you. You have been spending money, spending money, spending money. No recuperation. You cannot treat spiritual problem with medical remedies or physical remedies. Many are seeking to treat witchcraft. Sicknesses with medical, what do you call it? Medical remedies. Doctors are giving prescribing pills when it is witchcraft attack. Doctors are prescribing pills when people's names have been placed in the ER. Doctors are prescribing all manner of remedies when indeed people are under attack from the demon. Medicinal remedies are treatment cannot treat attacks from evil altars and witchcraft. Sores were all over Lazarus. He was smelly and stinky. Flies were all over him and around him. And even dogs were about him. Everything, all the blessings according to Ephesians 1 verse 3, were boycotted and placed on the evil altar. Lazarus was ignorant <coughs> as to what as to what his enemies have done, his ignorance caused him to perish. Just like many of us today. Our ignorance causing many of us to perish, to suffer, to live an unfulfilled life, an unprogressive life. One brother from the church told me, he said, you know, brother, see, I don't, I don't believe in witchcraft, you know. I, I don't, I don't, I don't believe it. And I've heard many people, people who have been close to, there's nothing I could have said to them to convince them of the existence of this God. Even if I take the Bible where it shows you concerning the witch of you where in, 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 in Samuel's, first Samuel chapter 16, I believe, where Saul went to the witch of Henry. To try and raise up Samuel from the dead. And several other passages were telling you must not suffer a witch to live and you must not deal in it. And the children, when they come into the land of Canaan, they should burn their altars 
break down the rules and burn it with fire. So you got to go at this thing with fire. And now, in the spirit, you got to go at it with all those fire and with the fire of the word of God. The Bible, Jeremiah said, his word was like a hammer and fire. So you got to go again, search with the word of God. Jeremiah said, word are like fire shut up in my bones. No, you cannot fight witchcraft with witchcraft. And when you are under attack, you can't go to say that you're going to use witchcraft to attack back the person. You got to fight, but fight right. Second Corinthians 10, but though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk in the flesh. And we need to learn to see beyond the physical, because the war is in the spirit realm. And when you win the war in the spirit realm, you will win in the physical. You just sit back and watch things unfold. And things take place because you have already been successful in the spirit realm. Lazarus was ignorant. His ignorance caused him to perish. More so, his ignorance and lack of knowledge of evil action against him by wicked men and women dealing with the demon dealt him a deadly blow and eventually cost him his life. The Bible says that he died. You think it was God's will for Lazarus to be placed at the rich man's gate full of soul and to die there outside the gate saying that he's a follower of God, he's a child of God. And so many of us are living the life of Lazarus. We are reenacting Lazarus's lifestyle today, many of us as Christians. He lived and died prematurely, robbed of his destiny, his gifts, talents, riches, and success that should have blessed humanity were stripped from him by wicked men and women in the evil altar. I told you I would have returned to a word to help us better understand what was happening to Lazarus. That word is desire. The Bible tells us that Lazarus was, and the Bible says, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs. You're telling me that God was so big. He spoke and it came to pass. He commanded and it was done. He said, the cattle on a thousand hills are his, and the birds of the forest, he knows them. You're telling me that all Lazarus could have done was to desire to be fed with the crumbs. So what about the banquet that was spread on this rich man's table? Why not be fed with what's on his table? Are to be a guest at this man's table, seeing he's a child of the king. Many of us Of our desires misplaced. We are only desiring crumbs when God has prepared a banquet for us. A buffet. We take what we desire or what we need. Crumbs. Crumbs are for the dogs. You are not a dog, I'm not a dog. Why do you think the dogs were there licking Lazarus' soul? 
You think the dogs traveled to come and be his companions? Because the dogs were at the gate to get the crumbs. So Lazarus was brought down to the level of a dog by the witches and wizards who placed his name in the evil altar and assailed him with witchcraft and he was ignorant to it so he did not know how to combat it we're getting somewhere desiring to be fed with the crumbs this was not Lazarus's natural desire this was not of his own accord evil spells were projected at him devils and demons from his enemies evil altars were whispering such to him and distracting his mind from his source of deliverance who is jesus christ the righteous they were also blocking all avenues of deliverance by doing so they would be able to better destroy him to ensnare him and to entrap him so that they could carry out their diabolical schemes and wishes that they wanted upon themselves. Proverbs 11 and verse 9b states, By knowledge shall the just be delivered. If Lazarus had a knowledge of this witchcraft system, this occult system, and that this sword, this sickness, this spirit of infirmity, was projected at him and it did not come from God and it did not come naturally. So it did not just come come from nowhere or just appeared and, and he was the candidate of a sweep state in spirit of infirmity where sores covered him. No, 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 no. This was projected at Lazarus just as it was projected at your sister, at your aunt, at your cousin, at your daughter, at your son, at your brother, at your father, at your friend, at your husband, or at your wife. This is a spirit of infirmity sent from the demon. Where they went and they sacrificed his animals. And in this day and age, they're doing humans, babies, blood sacrifice. So this was no cheap science that they sent at Lazarus. By knowledge shall the just be delivered. Lazarus is an example, exemplar when it comes to ignorance of evil altars and witchcraft, just as many of us today, even in the church. Because there are pastors saying they don't believe in witchcraft and witchcraft is not real. There are brothers and sisters saying witchcraft is not real. Even when you take the Bible and show them where the Bible says witchcraft is an abomination unto God and you must not practice it and that Saul was commanded to kill all the witches and wizards and then he went to the witch of Endor. The Bible says Saul died because he went and consulted a medium. Not having knowledge of something does not mean it does not exist or might not or might be having an adverse influence upon your life. So not believing that witchcraft doesn't exist doesn't mean that witchcraft is not going to attack you or people are not going to cast spells on you and they are not going to work. In fact, when you do not know, that's the time that it works at you. Because you see things and you look at things from a natural perspective and from the physical standpoint. Not knowing that something is coming at you from the spiritual. In fact, you need to take consideration and account of your dreams and don't take them for granted. You need to cancel all those dreams. That you are of all those negative things. You're eating, you, you're drinking, you're swimming in water, you're having sex. And all this kind of stuff, people shooting at you and fighting you and doing all manner of things, 
No, no, no. You are in bed sleeping. How comes all these masquerading spirits seeking to forge covenants with you in a dream? Speaking to the dead? No. Those are demonic, diabolic, um, masquerading spirits seeking to go into covenant with you. You signing documents? No. When you do all those things in the dream, when you need to cancel those dreams, you don't even have to remember the dream, but you've got to come again to those dreams. Accept what God has meant for you and reject what comes from the kingdom of darkness. And that what were those which were projected from evil altars against you. The devil loves when you are in ignorance. That's the way he likes it. That's how we will be able to rob, kill, and destroy your destiny, your talents, your gifts, your family, your prosperity, your health, and ultimately, your soul. Isaiah 4, verse 6 says, For lack of knowledge, my people are destroyed. And many people are being destroyed today. Sad to say, um, Christians, many Christians are being destroyed. Living an unfulfilled life, an unsuccessful life. Imagine you go to university, Graduate and top are your disciplines. Come out with two degrees or one degree. And you can't get a job. People who do not have the qualifications are getting the jobs. They wouldn't want you to sweep the street or to as much as work in a coffee shop or basket robin or in a supermarket. They want you to suffer. Just like Lazarus, strip you down to nothing and place you on the street to panhandle and to beg for crumbs to put you at a place with the dogs because the, 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 the crumbs that Lazarus was desiring comes out for the dogs. So Lazarus was competing with the dogs for the crumbs. And no, 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 God did not create us to go desire no crumbs. Now call upon me and I will show you great and marvelous things with you as I do. Call upon me and I will show you great and marvelous things with you as I do. Isaiah 4 verse 6, my final text, you get part 2. For lack of knowledge, my people are destroyed. Lazarus lack knowledge. Many of us are re-enacting re Lazarus' lifestyle on a daily basis. And we'll die, both broke, busted, disgusted, and not trusted. Don't even have a bed, much less on hands. Can't even buy a loaf of bread. But yet still we say we are the head and not the tail. And then we still say we are blessed. And we are just being a living stress to other people. Now, may God bless you. May you take a look into your life and see what is happening there. Just know it just might well be witchcraft and evil altars are lifted at you. You can't get a house. You can't get a job. You can't get nothing. If you get a job, you can't keep it. You work, the money just evaporates. Here, chaos in your house. Kids are rebellious. Why? You love each other, but it's constant fight. Uh, what's happening? You need to check yourself against the word of God. The Bible says, for lack of knowledge, my people are destroyed. Proverbs 11, 9b says, by knowledge shall it just be delivered. Receive knowledge, receive instruction, and be delivered. The Bible in Proverbs chapter 8 says, When wisdom has entered thy heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, understanding shall keep thee, and discretion shall preserve thee. And it continues and tell it what it will keep you from and preserve you from. May you seek to walk in wisdom, knowledge, and be delivered from these wicked witches and wizards, from their evil altars, and from your spells. And don't Reenact Lazarus' lifestyle 
are the arena men of Lazarus, of the parable of Lazarus. May God bless you. May God keep you. And I pray you like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, and look forward to part two. God bless you all. Have a good day. Let us pray. Father, I bless your name. I glorify your name. I thank you for your words, Lord. Your word are sweet, Lord. Your words are like only and the only comb. Father, I pray by as it is said by them are your servants who warned. So Father, as as Jesus is Lord, ministry seek to edify, to educate, and to help men and women to understand the word of God and to understand their purpose that God has placed them on his earth for. I pray, Father, that you will cover this channel under the blood of Jesus Christ and that the word will go forth. And as Isaiah 7 verse 7 says it shall not stand any weapon that comes anything that comes will not stand against this channel father you said that you want to be your word to perform me and you said your word will not return unto you boy father cover us from all these evil altars and spells that they will project and father i pray that someone will receive deliverance and this Bible study this presentation that have been of help to someone and change someone's life is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and have a good day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.